Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to Betrayal at Krondor. We are continuing to avoid Krondor. After all, that's where the betrayal will be. So why would we want to go there and trigger the betrayal? Plus, there's stuff out here. Uh, we uh, brute forced a trap. Somewhat. Um, I really do not know what the uh, proper way to handle that trap is, but um, it has been handled. More corn. Private residence. The small house, it turns out, was home to a slight balding historian named Kellen, who wa talked of the ancient Valheru and the relatively recently recent cataclysm near Sethanon, as he got them some fresh water for their packs. The folks I've interviewed, the ones living near Sethanon, say they thought the world was coming to an end, like the fabric of heaven was being turned back upon itself, revealing another universe in the skies. And they all talked about the explosion and fearsome flying beasts circling in the sky. His voice trailed off. I think it may have something to do with the dragon lords who once roamed freely on this world. One day I'm going to figure it all out. Locklear laughed. I'm sure you will, Kellen. Someday, and when you do, I'd like to read that book. In the meantime, thank you for the water. Goodbye. A lot of people who just invite us into their homes. Alright, so that would take us... on this road over to Sethanon, which uh, we don't want to go yet. Some nice purple mountains in the distance. Where does this path lead? Ah, this leads to Egli. No one's lived here in, for s in some time, he said, looking around the empty room. There's a lot of abandoned houses. No one's lived here, either. Okay. It's a tavern. Locklear sniffed. Stepping in s just inside the tavern's doorway, he detected the faint but familiar scent of lye and the more pungent aromas they were meant to erase. It would be a foolish tavern keeper who neglected to have a cleaning boy close at hand when where men drank to excess. The Stranger. Except for a battle-scarred mercenary who glanced up at them, the common room of the tavern was completely empty. Only the restless shuffle of feet on the boards over their heads indicated anyone else was in the building. So we can talk. It is also an inn. Well, let's go ahead and talk to you, then. Locklear motioned to the figure across the room. The man walked over to join them. He stood before them, eyebrows arched inquisitively. What can I do for you today? I do believe this is the loneliest tavern I've ever visited. Where is everyone? Everyone is elsewhere. With the exception of Rake, myself, and a handful of boarders that have wandered in from off the road, there's not been another soul in town since the festival. Everyone? Why? What happened here? Come the eighth hour of last evening, a cloaked gentleman entered through that same door there and took a seat. He ordered a joint of beef, a loaf of bread, and a mug of ale. I remembered these things because I had ordered the same. As soon as he had finished his meal, he went to the tavern keeper and tossed down fifty golden sovereigns, turned round, and was gone by the door. Before the first of the, those coins stopped their spinning on the counter, the rest of the people in the tavern rushed out after him. The keeper didn't even latch the door. So... you decided to stay? I mean, I guess finders keepers. Some sort of deal? Nope, some sort of damn local ritual. Seems I arrived in the middle of a ceremony that was called the Festival of the Stranger. Uh, traditionally, the elders of the town would gather in the tavern and draw lots when... And the one with the longest lot was dubbed the Stranger. On the first night of the festival, the Stranger comes round and offers the members of the town fake sovereigns. They called them Nymptos. And then the citizens of the town leave to sleep in the fields. Of course, I wasn't aware of what was going on. And they're supposed to stay in the fields? 
Ah, oh, no, no, no. The next morning, the elected stranger is to circle the village three times while swinging a strand of hemp over his head. When he is done, he cuts the length of rope and sets it on the road to let, let the people know that they can come back. They then know that Killian is looking with good fortune on their township and that she won't strike their fields dead. If the strand is not placed, however, it means that she is displeased and any citizen that attempts to return to town will be struck dead. Was the stranger killed by Killian? No, not Killian, but by a man named the Collector, to whom he owed money, who didn't know about the town's tradition. Didn't matter to the citizens of Egley, though. They still chose to see it as a sign from Killian, and they haven't returned since. Think the place is cursed and won't return until the curse is lifted. They've relocated to, to Tenur's Hawk's Hollow, and a few in Malak's Cross. They all believe they've done the right thing, and have given me permission to do whatever I wanted here. Out of respect for them, I've decided to keep the old town name of Egli. <laughs> I don't know, it seems people would have, uh, would have to be pretty thick to believe all of that. Would they? Would you have the nerve to spit on a shrine of Ishap? No, but I, I guess I can see your point. Everyone has their beliefs. Many people in these villages at one time were farmers, and it is difficult for them to simply turn their back on the goddess of nature. They require her blessing before they can go, go on to new lives. You should remember that before you judge something to be ignorant. So, as my new job is bartender of this tavern, I suppose it's my duty to see if you need anything. Can I set you up? The Festival of Mercenaries and Buildings. Uh, I do believe that guy is a Quegian pirate, but I'm not positive. Uh, what can, you, can you tell me more about this festival? Which god did you say this festival of the stranger was in celebration of? The fertility goddess, bringer of harvests, the earth mother, Sylvan, pick a name. All mean the same thing. She's the wench to whom Ma and Pa Ugly pray to have little runt ugly and enough wheat to eat through the winter. Can't say I have much use for her. Is there a temple of hers nearby, or...? Straight west of Egli, then north at the crossroads. Big white building with the columns. Smells like a whore's bedchamber. Hard to miss. Can't say that I know what a whore's bedchamber smells like, but okay. Uh, mercenaries. One of the brothers from the Abbey of at Sarth has seen several mercenaries on the move through the Principality, and he said they looked Quegian. <laughs> I mean, you know, we have kind of fought a few, but, you know. With a good Quegian name like Devonius, I was thinking you might know something about them. I haven't had anything to do with the Dauphiness of Quegan or or her bastard father-in-law for over three years now. I burned my writs of passage the day Spitzer and I boarded the Dauphiness's war galley, the Storm's Master, and sunk King Lebeus's flagship with all hands on board. Since that, since that day, I've worked only for me. Me. Then you have no idea why there would be so many mercenaries wandering free in the kingdom? You don't get more than three Quegian mercenaries together in one spot unless you're paying them to be together. Small little island like that, most of them have killed a member of another mercenary's family. Pay them well, they'll put their personal vendettas aside long enough to do what's asked of them before they start on, on one another. Whoever's funding them must be must have an incredible fortune in rubies somewhere. Rubies? Isle's sovereigns won't buy a thing in Quegg except a month underground in King Lebius' pain pens. Rubies, that's all they'll take. It's an interesting way of, uh, form of currency. Um, well, what can you tell me about this Spitzer fellow? You mentioned someone named Spitzer who boarded the Storm's Master with you. Was he a friend of yours? Is he still around? You know, to be passing through, you ask a lot of questions. Yeah, just curious. I was wondering if maybe he would know anything about the Quakians. He's got more reason to be afraid of King Levis than I do. He'd avoid Quegians like the plague. Now, if you want to play dice with him, I'm sure he'd be ha plenty happy to talk to you. He was in Tenor's last I heard. Ah, that must be the, uh, must be at the, uh, tavern that we couldn't go to. Uh, buildings. With the whole town to yourself, I'm surprised you haven't opened up any of the other shops or houses. I'm leaving them be until I know what's eventually going to happen here. Never know when some folk is going to show up and want his property back. I don't want to be the idiot holding the bag. If most of the folks were smart, they probably locked their houses and I'm not much of a lockpick. 
Know anyone who is? Strange character named a book. I ran across him when I was working for the Dolphiness of Cassandra of Quegg. We discovered him once when we boarded a Keshian vessel. After he helped open a few choice chests of mercantile, we chained him up in the belly of the ship so we could make a present of him to Cassandra. But when we docked in Palenque, all we found in the hold of the ship was a note saying he could be found in Sildin if ever we needed his services. Never hired anyone else for a lockpicking job since. Hmm. Alright, goodbye. Thank you for your hospitality, Devin. It was a pleasant respite from traveling the roads. Remember that the next time you talk to someone about Egly. Time to start some new rumors. That we will. Goodbye, Devin. Uh, staying at the inn might be a good idea. Three sovereigns for the night. Seems good. Alright. Uh, the guest book was open. Intrigued, Locklear checked to make certain the Nightmaster wasn't coming, and scanned the pages. While there weren't any f names familiar to him, he was puzzled by a red circle that had been drawn around their false traveling names. Get your nose out of there, the Nightmaster snapped, appearing in the doorway. That's private information. Only business you have here is signing up for another night. Is that what you want? Nope. Let's go ahead and leave. Where's that building? Ah, hiding, hiding behind the trees. A shop of some kind. The building appears to have been abandoned. They locked up after themselves. Think we should take a shot at opening it? Oh, that was Goreth. Whoops. Yes, I think we should. Lockpick snapped. Uh, let's go ahead and... Mark lockpicking. Okay, that doesn't work. Let's try that again. Nope. Alright. Let me load back up. So I would rather not uh, have one of these break to something that I can't even open. I mean, my lock picking is only 50. But it would be nice. I don't I don't mind if the lock picks break. Unless of course we break lots of them. I'm not sure if the when it says the lockmaker knew what he was doing, that means that you just are never going to be able to open it with your current skill. It's only 51, though. Let's see if that getting up to 51 was enough. No. Alright. It's not worth it. Well, actually... That's a lot of, uh... points I'm getting. If I can keep trying to get more points, I don't mind losing a few lockpicks along the way.
Well, I guess I'll go with that. Place is abandoned. Maybe the occupants left something behind we can use. Let's have a look. Hey, one gold coin, five silver. I will take that. No one has lived here in some time. All right, let's uh, let's run back to Tenors. Uh, did I check this building over here? I don't think I did. Nah, no one's lived here anyway. Alright, get back onto the road. Zip on south, past there. All right, which one was the tavern? Probably not that one. Probably this one. Okay. Tom's Tavern. Oh, there's a lot of people here. Could do some barding, barmaid. Got some people we can talk to. There's the inn. Let's talk to the barmaid first, and you don't really have anything. Let's get on to uh, the barding. Despite the fact that the light was dim and pooled only in shallow corners, the mood within seemed cheerful as the tavern keeper animatedly related tales of mischief, reaping gales of laughter from people who had most likely heard his story dozens of times. Owen played. His fingers slid easily over the lute's fingerboard as he moved between chords of This King to Mine, the notes filling him up as well as guiding him forward. Quietly, he began to sing the refrain. When at last he had finished with the tune, he found his audience was sitting in stunned silence, their gazes all fixed on him. That was beautiful, the tavern keeper said. Reaching into his pouch, he removed 30 sovereigns and placed them in Owen's hand. Thank you. I will take 30 gold coins. Hello, lady. The question had been innocent enough. While he had meant nothing by asking the woman what she was doing in the tavern, Locklear found he was suddenly at the mercy of a rather pathetic street hawker. I'm trying to sell these, the woman said. She opened up a rucksack and drew out a handful of cracked seashells, handing them over to Locklear to examine. Have you tried to sell them to a merchant somewhere? Yeah, this is text that we've seen before. All right, what about you? The man scowled, apparently far more intent on something going on across the common room. He seemed interested, uninterested in Locklear's repeated attempts to chat. At last, he glanced up and gave an exasperated sigh. What exactly do you want? Just a little friendly talk, Locklear said with a companionable smile. News, gossip, a song perhaps? Well, go find a bloody jongleur and leave me be. I've got better things to do than entertain every jackaboot that comes through that door. Um, there was a tavern that I didn't go to investigate uh, back in the previous area south of Lamut. Um, I did off-screen go check it out and it was not a tavern like this. It was just a pop-up, get some food if you want it. And I don't think it... I, I think it was like this barmaid where they didn't even have rations. Hello! They joined a shifty-eyed man. No games right now, fellas. I owe some money to a bloke in the back room. Hmm, pardon me. And I don't think he would appreciate me giving it to you in a game of chance. Noticing that the man seemed a little nervous, Locklear said, Who's this person you owe money? He's known by folks round here as the Collector. He lowered his voice until he was barely more than a whisper. They say he killed a fellow, fellow over an eggly called Stellan. Well, perhaps we can find a game with you on another day. Hmm. 
And what about you, fellow? Luckily, we're strained to hear. Standing next to the entrance, bits of conversation coming from the table near by were occasionally, uh, were occasionally managing to fight their way through the other noises in the tavern. Fools are Megley, he heard. Then another man said in a hushed voice, It was looking for Stellan, something about unpaid debts, but... The voices dipped back beneath the surface of noise, and Locklear could hear no more. I wonder if that's who that corpse was, the Stellan fellow. Can't talk to that person back there, apparently. Alright, well, it was getting dark, so, um... The sleepy man glared at them. Locklear couldn't help but feel the man was sizing them up in some way, but he seemed harmless enough, so they thought nothing else of it. Hmm. Sure, I made some money last night. Party's barding ability has increased. Very nice. Oh, Gorth is up to 7% now. 35% for Locklear. And Owen did not go up. Disappointing. I didn't pick up anything that I want to sell, did I? Or that I can sell. No, I don't think so. All right. Now that guy's body is too close to uh, Tenur's for it to be the uh, related to Egly, I think. All right, so we're uh, back up near Egly. Let's just uh, continue on this way past Egly. Egli's kind of a big town, really, when you think about it. Alright, let's unclick from the road. Let's go ahead and save to the bookmark. So we can see a... Uh, well, I guess it wasn't a road. I thought, I, I thought we could see a road through there. Maybe it's just the... Uh, draw distance. Gorth stopped and stared off into the distance. After several seconds of contemplation, he turned and began to speak. Look at that tree over there. Lower limbs have all been hacked off. That either means we're near someone's property line, or someone was ensuring they had an unobstructed view of the area. If we continue in this di direction, we should proceed with great caution. So, I'm not sure that we can actually avoid a uh, an ambush when we get this. Because obviously that's what's going on. Uh, we might be able to... Nope. They were being watched, unsure where their observers were located. Locklear wheeled about just as a figure emerged from behind the trees. Good. Nice miss. Let's have some fun. 78%. Only 30, hmm? Okay, I may have made a mistake. I also made a mistake on, uh, switching off this thing. the guy. And I was thinking about it, but... Gorath has a lot of hit points, at least. That guy's a little bit more dangerous. Did he hit that? Did he hit that guy? I think he might have. Go 
blind you. Did you die already? Keep blinding you. There we go. Down you go. Dang it. There's no way for me to check to see how uh, injured he is either. Going after the spellcaster. Wow, that was not much. Take him down. All right, let's go with flame cast. Eighty-four percent chance. Good. this. Hopefully you don't hit Gorath. Okay. Ooh, actually, you know what we could do? Put it on Hocho's Haven. Boop. <laughs> no, you are not getting away right now. Have fun just uh, sitting around doing nothing there, Gora. I mean, I got really lucky with the first miss, but uh, then I, I, I should have blinded him immediately. The battle was won. Okay. Ooh. Uh, Silverthorn. Gorath was careful as he held it up, knowing a single scratch from its silvery thorns could kill. Corpulent red berries dangled from the plant's rose-like stem, each bud heavy with deadly poison. If crushed over a blade or an arrow, the silver thorn would make any cut made with the weapon far more lethal. And we got one poisoned quarrel. Poison gleamed on the quarrel's deadly head. Even should he only graze an opponent's shoulder with one of the with one of the bolts, the poison would have its his victim writhing in pain within seconds. Uh, plus seven. Uh, seven plus crossbow for damage. Accuracy is minus five. All right, well, let's go ahead and grab these. No room. We'll be coming back for some of this other stuff later. Hey, there's two lockpicks. And poisoned rations. Uh, ten uses on the Ring of Prander. That's pretty nice. 50 gold coins, four uses on restoratives, go ahead and take those, Is that all of them? It feels like there was 
another person here. There's a building over there. Uh, where did the bodies go? Oh, there they are. Wow. No, I guess this is all of them. Okay, so, uh, I'm going to need to... run back places and sell them. Unfortunately, it looks like it would be faster to go uh, west, um, which might be... might be something that we want to do. Uh, let me just check to see if there is, uh, like, enemies that way or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it looks like we are going to have some enemies that way. Um, all right, well, let's go ahead and camp for now. Uh, need some stuff taken care of. All right, well, I think that I will uh, call this an episode. When we come back next time, uh, I will have run back uh, places to sell some things. Um... Let me see. What are we looking at? I do have some equipment already. I could grab a sword. It's a shame these don't stack. But I guess it's understandable. That works. Anyway, uh, when we come back next time... Um, I'll have uh, gotten all the stuff and sold it and everything like that. Um, and I'm not going to go up and around this way to do it. Um, even though that would probably be faster. Just so that I don't uh, trigger any of the events that are over there. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys next time. See you then, everyone.